Welcome to a new video in my Home Automation OpenHab and Node-RED series. As the title suggests, I'm getting familiar with a new ARM IoT Home Automation tool called Blink. There will most probably be a few more videos on Blink projects in the future, but first, let's talk about what Blink is and how does it work. Blink is an IoT platform which lets you control, monitor, interact with your IoT devices. If you are familiar with the industrial terms, Blink is the SCADA of IoT. What Blink gives you? Blink provides a set of Arduino libraries and a cloud server. You take your internet connected devices, such as an Audi, uh, Arduino with an Ethernet shield or an ESP8266 baseboard or a Ra Raspberry Pi, and there are many other boards supported. Create and upload a sketch uh, with Arduino IDE. The sketch with the Blink libraries will create a connection between your device and the Blink server. On the front-end side, you can access the Blink from a mobile app where you can design the user interface for your project. The landscape can get more complicated by running your own local Blink server for more flexibility and security. And you are getting all this for free. Important to note that the Blink app is really a UI front-end. There are widgets for buttons, sliders, joystick, display elements, graphs, gauges, notification tools uh, available in the app to control your devices and display values from those devices. Any logic needs to be implemented in C++ code running on the IoT device. Let's take a classic thermostat example. The app will be used to set the desired temperature and display the current temperature and maybe the state of the boiler, whether the boiler is on or off. But the actual logic, which turns the boiler on if the current temperature drops, drops below the set temperature, needs to be programmed in the device via the Arduino IDE. In my views, you should consider Blink if you need a simple way to implement the user interface, you need an easy access to your project over a phone, uh, with the cloud service, it works uh, from anywhere on your phone, and I personally really like the look and feel of the, uh, uh, the UI they provide. The other important note is you should use Blink if you don't want, uh, want to manage your own local server. There is, a, there is an option to go for a local server, but if I would go down that route uh, of managing a local server, I would probably use Node-RED and QTT and some of the other tools which provides more functionality for me personally. Make sure that you don't mind programming and you have a knowledge of C and also uh, some knowledge within Arduino IDE. I have to mention that this is also becomes a huge asset given the community and the libraries behind the Arduino. And my last point, you should use Blink if you need an easy way to share a project. That again is really easy and a neat feature which lets you provide access to projects for others to use whilst you're keeping administrative rights to yourself. As I said before, Blink is almost free. The libraries are free. The Arduino ID is of course free. The mobile app is free. The Blink account is free. Uh, and you get a vibrant and very helpful community. There is a limit of 10 projects in the app. Each widget that you put on the UI costs uh, what they call the energy which you can get some when you sign up. That initial pack of energy is enough for about half a dozen simple widgets. After that, you need to purchase energy with simple money. So you could be spending a few bucks on any new project. Before I give a high level overview of my first project, um, let's look at how the, the, the Blink site offers and how you get started. So first you need to go to Blink, which is Blink.cc, and you will find this, uh, this website, which gives a really high level overview of what uh, Blink is about. And you have this link which says getting started, and then um, it tells you what steps you need to do. So well, first you need, well, first or not first, but at some point we will definitely need the Blink app, so you can have it for Android or I, uh, iOS. Um, next, you need to download the, the Blink libraries. And as I said, the, the programming of any Blink project is done in the Arduino IDE. So you need to have the Arduino IDE running. And then this uh, section um, here tells you how you add the, um, the Blink libraries to your Arduino. And once you have done that, you will also have a couple of example projects as well. But more importantly, uh, you can go to this uh, Blink's uh, uh, code builder, which uh, 
is is a really easy tool to get started and it also already gives you a lot of uh, different design ideas and and examples so first of all you need to select the board that you will be using and as you see there are quite a few of them that are uh, already supported by uh, by Blink. And as you can see, most of the ESP8266 or ESP32 boards and, and clones are supported, along with Arduino and some other things that I never, never used before. And then you, uh, you pick the project that you want to implement. So again, there are some really good examples that um, uh, will get you started. I obviously started with the, the first one is the simple blink one. Um, what you need, so whenever you select a project, then the, the code here in the, on the right gets uh, automatically updated based on the based on the example. And to get started, you basically just need three things. You need to set the, the SSID of your wireless network and the password for your wireless network, and you need your token. So you will get this token in the app when you say that, a particular app um, should be using a, a device. So you said, okay, I'm starting a new project which uses an ESP8266. So you will get a token, you enter the token in here, and this is how you link your physical device to a project. And then all you have to do is just copy and paste this code into your um, Arduino, and then you are ready to go. You just need to compile and then upload the, the sketch. Again, in my examples, I'm using a ASP8266. So if you need, if you are using the same board, just make sure that your uh, Arduino ID is set up for ESP8266. Just Google how to set it up for Arduino. There are a couple of steps that you need to do, but it's it's fairly easy. And after that, you can program your ESP using the Arduino ID. Uh, so I think that would be pretty much it in the nutshell. The really easy things to do is. Um, let's say you want to use the ESP or let's say or the Arduino is without writing any particular code your application or your app would have direct access to all the all the pins so as you can see in the next few minutes i have a um, a very simple project where i have some relays connected to my vmos uh, d1 mini and all i have done is i uploaded this really simple blink sketch and uh, because my app or blink knows that i'm using a particular physical device like a vmos v1 d uh, vmos uh, d1 mini it knows what sort of pins it has so i can directly control those pins and just by connecting the relay to it i can you know create a really simple remote uh, switch uh, with let's say almost no programming at all but let's see how it works in real life let me give you a quick overview how Blink works uh, or how you set up a basic project uh, on something that I'm working on at the moment and I'm going to create a more detailed video on how this actually works but uh, I just want to use it for an overview. Um, so here the, the, the brain of the project is uh, the Savimos D1 Mini. Um, I choose this one because, uh, well, first of all, I had a few laying around. It has Wi-Fi, so the network connectivity is already solved, and it's cheap, and, well, you can also program this via uh, the Arduino IDE. And just to have some outputs, I have this relay board, so four relays connected to it, and uh, so that I can test something how you, you know, uh, send data f uh, collected locally on the device to the cloud. I have this uh, DHC11 temperature and humidity sensor, so that is sending temperature and humidity data over to my Blink project um, uh, once every two seconds, I think. So when you start with the Blink app, um, it would be, it would show something like this, instead, uh, since I already have a project, I, I don't have a big create a new project button, but that's what you would see on, on your first page, oh yeah, something like that, so uh, create a new project, and okay, you want to new, create a new project, uh, you can select the theme to be light and dark. I actually like the dark one. And then you select the uh, the board that you want to use. For the Vivos Mini, I just select Wi-Fi and I would create a new project. And, um, and okay, so that's about the authentication tokens. Because every time you create a new project, um, actually I'm going to go back one and I'm going to use this project, is, um, um, so when you create a new project, you can see that uh, you have a device which is assigned to that project. And then every device 
uh, you actually can have multiple devices, you know, feeding data or controlling uh, the same project. But every single device would have a author uh, the authorization token, and that's the authorization token that needs to be within the um, the sketch uploaded to this device. So that's how the the project and the physical device gets connected. So in my um, setup, I just only have one device. That's fine. Uh, and again, you can see you give uh, the project a title and there are a few things like um, uh, whether you want a dark light team, you want the uh, screen to be on and, uh, um, and you can clone the project and delete it. And uh, what I haven't used yet is, is this really uh, this uh, shared access functionality where you can give access to this application as users uh, uh, to different users, meaning that they would be able to control your application, but you still be able to make changes to it. So, and that's what I'm going to use with my uh, with my brother. So, I'm I'm planning to do something for him, so I can do you know all the design here, and I can you know share this application to him. And already, what you can see is that you can see this um, uh, what is the electrical sign icon with the with a number on it. So that's the that's the cost of doing certain things, what I was talking about before. And once you have the project, um, you can add certain um, UI elements to the project. So again, you have probably seen this before. So you have all the you know basic things like the button and the slider and joystick and the RGB selector. And then you have the different display elements like values, gauges. LCD screens, graphs and history graphs, terminal windows and a few additional um, ah, go away. So a few additional items like uh, a menu table or a map, notification stuff and and some others which uh, um, I haven't tried yet and also some other stuff which is related to what your phone can do like um, the GPS coordinates or the accelerometer within your phone. So that's fine. And then you can see is because I've created these many objects already, I only have 200 of these energy icons left and I can just add and I can purchase additional things uh, uh, which I can spend on my project or projects, but I'm not sure about how that works across multiple projects. So, as I said, it's not entirely free because uh, if you want to do anything, you know, big or decent, then you have to fork out a few quid to, for the extra energies. And when you talk about the, all these components, let's say this is the push button and I click on the push button, you can set, if, uh, set a few things, whether that needs to be a push button or a switch, like a toggle switch, uh, and then most importantly, what is the output? So what is it? Is it connected to? And every um, uh, every device would have digital pins. So these are the actual physical pins on the on the device. And that's why it's important to select the correct device in the beginning because then um, the app would know what are the pins on the um, uh, on that particular hardware. So on the Vimos D1 Mini, I have uh, digital pins D0 to D8 and I also have virtual pins. So these virtual pins act like, um, and they are like, you know, 200 or, no, 127. So you can uh, think about virtual pins as, um, as variables, like global variables that um, your app can read or display or write and also the, your device can also set, uh, read and, and write to. So anything which is uh, not related to any physical pin. And, and of course you, uh, you can specify the state. And normally this is like um, for a, a simple digital pin, it's a zero to one, but my relay is an active low, so I just swap these values around. And you can even have the different labels for um, the issue display when it's on or off. And, um, and then you can easily move these stuff around. And, uh, and then when you move it, you can resize them. So this is how I created this big one, and this I left a smaller one. And for anything where uh, you want to display, uh, so for example, I'm displaying the, the, um, the temperature coming from the DHT sensor, and for that I can, I can use the analog pin as well, but um, 
since the DHT11 is digital, I'm using the digital pin. So this is not obviously a physical pin on the device, but there is a piece of code running on the on the VMO switch. You know, reads the data from the DHT11, decodes the, the temperature and the humidity. So I'm storing them into virtual variables or you know virtual pins. And so I know within the code that I'm using, I think it's uh, pin five. Uh, pin 5 and 6 for the humidity and the temperature. So um, I'm using it um, <clears throat> I'm specifying it here that I want to use uh, V6 and and I think for the other one I'm using V5. Yeah, that's it. And also you have some control about the formatting. So I want the the pin value and the percentage sign and there are a few options what you can do there. And the same thing for for this uh, last piece here. Um, so again, this is a push button, and this push button is instead of uh, triggering a physical pin, now it's triggering a virtual pin. And again, within the code, I handle the fact that this pin, uh, this virtual pin, get updated from the from the app, and I have something like another virtual pin, which again just displays some some value. So again, in my examples, I this is my charging circuit, so I. I started charging by clicking on the button and then I have a countdown which now counts down from 30 minutes down to zero then it automatically turns off. Um, so I think that would be uh, pretty much about the uh, the app and how the app works. Uh, and of course now I'm in, in edit mode in the app and, and now all of, um, I just click on the the play button and and now I'm live. And you can also see the state of the device so I can see that the you know my first first VMOS is online. Uh, obviously, if you would have multiple uh, devices connected, you will see all of them here. And if I can click on it, you can hear that it's actually controlling the device live. And it is pretty fast, I would have to say, considering that this um, you know goes up to the cloud and comes back in uh, to the VMOS. Um, sometimes I notice that it's not instantaneous. Uh, for example, you can hear it now, but um, it works. Um, I would say pretty well. So I'm, I'm quite happy how it actually works. That will be all for this video. In the next one on Blink, I would be, um, I will have a closer look on this particular project, and I would explain in detail how the code works and 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 have a second look at the the app as well. I hope you find this useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.